The council is not allowed to respond, so all your questions will essentially be rhetorical. Um, and But we are available afterwards, of course, to have direct questions delivered to us when the meeting's over or any time after. Um, our contact information is available at the city website. Um, sometimes folks are haven't timed out their presentations quite well and sometimes run over three minutes. There's, uh, I, I will allow it if you're wrapping up. If and, and by wrapping up doesn't mean moving on to the third or fourth paragraph. After that, I mean just finish your sentence or finish your thought. Um, if you proceed past that point and essentially filibuster, I will ask you to stop. If you refuse to stop, then we will recess and uh, we will not convene again until you quit the chambers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, with that notification, we will start with Paul Voss. Actually, can we switch the order? You can, whatever, okay. Yeah, and when you come up, speak, uh, give us your name and address. Oh, I saw the switch there. It was okay. Jeff Napolitano was first. Thanks. I'm Jeff Napolitano, 266 Grove Street. Um, I'm here to speak on the resolution regarding drone aircraft on the agenda. I understand that it might appear to be a remote issue, no pun intended, uh, and there might be the perception that it isn't under the purview of municipalities such as Northampton, but that is certainly not the case for several reasons. First, in the most basic sense, what you say has meaning and impact. You represent the voices of the people of Northampton, and our voices are important. As an organizer, I am reminded on a regular basis that change, at least good change, does not trickle down from the top. It starts from below in meetings like this of, good peop of people of goodwill. Second, we need to distinguish between militarized drones and the scientific drones that Professor Voss will be speaking on in just a moment. Militarized drones are continuing to be used to spy upon and bomb people, many innocent people, in other countries. And if our federal government won't stop using them, at least we, at a grassroots level, have an obligation to decry their use. Third, drones are here. As with so many other policies and technology, the use of militarized drones began abroad with marginalized people, people we're not supposed to care about. But it has gotten incrementally closer to you and me. First, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Yemen. Then five years ago, the border between US and Mexico. Now they are being flown in our skies, in secret by the federal government. In fact, one week ago, Director of the FBI, um, Miller, revealed for the very first time to a surprised Congress that the FBI has and continues to use drones for surveillance without actually having any guidelines to protect our civil liberties and safety. We have been forbidden from knowing more details, but such drones are here, and they have been used on the citizenry of the United States. So I hope that alarms and concerns you as much as it did members of Congress. Fourth and finally, militarized, militarized drones are a product in an industry. Like so many other industries funded by the Department of Defense, it has a momentum and a life of its own. The military is full up of drones because in the last dec decade they bought so many, they're now slowing their purchases. That means that military contractors have a supply that they need to get rid of and they've now turned to creating an aggressive domestic market selling them to local law enforcement agencies. Whether we like it or not, literally the air around us is being changed in order to accommodate the types of drones that conduct surveillance and yes, the ones that are armed. Professor Voss is going to talk precisely about how these changes are already concretely and as adversely affecting us in this city and across the country. This is not an abstract theoretical problem. The market for militarized drones is a very real market, and milita military contractors have a very real influence on our world and in Congress. What the resolution in front of you lays out is a mechanism for you, the representatives of the people of Northampton, to officially and formally weigh in on that reality. Uh, on another quick note, I wish to thank you for approving the resolution regarding the Guantanamo Bay prisoners last week. Um, Paki Whelan, who spoke here a week ago, was actually arrested yesterday in D.C. in an action to remind the power, powers that be of their moral duty. What you do has an effect. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, let Mr. Napolitano serve as an excellent example. Uh, uh, Paul Voss. <laughs> And, and when you step up, please uh, identify yourself and give us your address. Yes. So my name is Paul Voss, and I'm a resident of Northampton, uh, 89 Ridgewood Terrace, and I teach at Smith College in the engineering program. So I'm here also to support the resolution on drones. Um, specifically, um, I do research with this technology. I, I fly little uh, things all over the world, including uh, the smallest 
altitude control balloons that are made anywhere, and we fly them in Antarctica and all kinds of places to get climate data. Um, recently, it's been impossible to do work here. It's, we're facing so many federal restrictions on putting anything in the air outdoor, uh, including things that would be uh, toy things that you would buy at a, you know, a toy store. If you put a sensor on it, use it to teach the students engineering, anything else, it becomes an aircraft under FAA purview. It needs airworthiness certifications. Uh, and in fact, um, these uh, certificates of authorization, they're called, or COAs, are not even available to private institutions uh, at this point. So um, only public institutions and government agencies can fly anything, um, unless you're doing it for fun or for hobby. So this is how the FAA distinguishes things. So you can imagine this has a big impact on our program. Uh, we've actually canceled a course in aerial vehicle design uh, for in our engineering program. I've uh, sent students home not to do research in the summer uh, because we can't touch the air uh, unless we want to work indoors. Um, and I do atmospheric science, so that's not a, such an interesting place to study. So I spent a lot of time studying uh, the airspace and said, can they do this? And the answer is probably not. And I think this is where you guys come in um, I'll give you a brief 30-second uh, history, or maybe more. Uh, w when the airspace started out, we, uh, hundred, hundreds of years ago, common law said we owned the airspace ad coelum to the heavens. Property landowners owned the air above their property. That obviously became conflict with the first aircraft flights, and uh, it was actually someone sitting in your seats, uh, president, who became President Calvin Coolidge, uh, was the one who signed into law the Air Commerce Act of 1926, which established the federal airspace and turned uh, what is uh, the upper air into a federal highway, a public highway for aircraft, and left the airspace near the ground uh, in the hands of property owners and local control. So now we step forward uh, about 80 years or so, and uh, we have a situation where the FAA is now writing a lot of regulations and starting to tell us a lot of things that we can and can't do in our backyards one inch above the grass. And so what that means is that they internally are considering this to be navigable airspace, that public highway all the way down to the grass in our backyards. And there's lots of evidence for that. They won't say it outright, but you can put all the pieces together and it's pretty clear what's happening, that they, there's these low flying aircraft now, there's a huge market for it. The drone industry is salivating over all our backyards. They want to put stuff out there. They want to be able to freely fly, sell to police departments across the country, have uniform set of rules everywhere. They don't want property owners telling them what or local communities what they can and can't do. So this is where our resolution comes in. Uh, we take uh, control of the lowermost airspace and, and affirm what the Supreme Court has, uh, has said. And I think that could not be more beautifully said than a paragraph quoted directly from the main Supreme Court case in 1946 that talks about airspace. So on that note, I'll leave it to you guys to think about this. Thank you. And, and there you go. You read the last paragraph is in a frame here on our desk. Thank you. That's it's. Um, <clears throat> next, Nathaniel Fortune, please. Thank you. I too promise not to drone on. <laughs> oh, snap. All right. Uh, I'm Nathaniel Fortune, 152 Westbrook Road, Waitley. The reason I'm here in Northampton is twofold. First. I'm a professor of physics here at Smith College, and two, in 2010, your, city, your voters gave me the honor of giving me 14% of the vote in my can see for a state auditor at Green Rainbow Party. And in both my professional and political capacities, I'm here to ask the council to support this resolution on drone aircraft. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, okay. Uh, Joyce Palmer, Fortune. I am Joyce Palmer Fortune. I also live at 152 Westbrook Road in Waitley. I'm a member of the Select Board of Waitley, uh, but I'm here because I teach up the street. I teach physics too um, at Smith College, and I'm the co-chair of the local Pioneer Valley Green Rainbow Party. Uh, I just came to support this resolution and everything that uh, Paul said and everything that uh, was said before. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Rick Purcell, please. Rick Purcell, 99 Martin Street, Holyoke, Massachusetts. I'm also a member of the Green Rainbow Party, and I'm aggressively asking Alex Morris and our city council in Holyoke to support this resolution as well. Um, and your, your great leadership will show how it's done, so we'll, I'll take it back to Holyoke, whatever you decide to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, is this uh, Darlene Ellis? My name is Darlene Elias and I live in the city of Holyoke and um, 
I, I'm here in different capacities. Um, I'm an associate of the Green Rainbow Party. I'm a community organizer. I'm also in law enforcement. Um, I won't tell you what I do. <laughs> but um, the reality of the matter is, you know, besides the fact that the, the use of these drones is a really violation of human rights, um, as a resident, you know, as an individual, I really f uh, value my privacy. And um, just to think um, if we approve this kind of surveillance, you know, kind of carte blanche um, without questioning that, I can't imagine what it's going to lead to. Um, and to me, my privacy is really important, and I just truly encourage you to do whatever you can to adopt this resolution and to set a precedent for other communities and cities and towns. Um, take the lead so that they can do the same. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles O'Neill, please. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Charles O'Neill. I live at 2 Pomeroy Terrace. Um, I'm going to bring us back down to earth and <clears throat> talk about vibrant sidewalks instead of drones. Um, I'm concerned about the resolution about vibrant sidewalks because I think it's flawed and, and unnecessarily vague. And I wanted to make three points uh, about that. Um, first, uh, under the category survival, I think this resolution supports, uh, basically it looks like the council is supporting the notion that people should live on sidewalks. I think pe we should encourage people to live on sidewalks. I think it's dangerous, it's unhealthy, it's unsanitary. Um, and if really that's the purpose of this, then we really should not be building more benches, but we should be building <clears throat> tent platforms and outhouses instead. Um, and um, the second thing is, is I think that the uh, resolution also seems to encourage um, behavior and disruptive behavior out of the social norm. Um, and I don't think that where, as we might have to condone that or condone that sometimes, I don't think the council should be encouraging behavior outside the social norm. As I read this resolution, it would be seen that we would encourage people to walk down Main Street naked shouting obscenities. So I mean, I think that, that this needs to be more carefully worded. Um, and the uh, third thing is, is that, that oh. something that's really uh, uh, missing in this resolution is any mention of the merchants. Um, <clears throat> You can have all the sidewalks, you can make them as wide as you want, you can have everything you want. If there's no merchants downtown, there's no vibrant sidewalks. There's nothing in here to mention merchants. A major uh, function of sidewalks is to allow people to go to shops, go to restaurants, uh, and do those activities. Um, and I think that um, uh, clearly the merchants are an important part of vibrant sidewalks. They're completely left out of this resolution. In fact, I think the resolution does this the opposite. It actually uh, it discourages merchants from being here. If I was a merchant and I saw this resolution, uh, I'm not so sure I'd renew my lease um, in the sense that it seems to favor people sleeping on sidewalks, living on the sidewalks, um, and, um, and disruptive in behavior out of the, out of the social norm. Uh, I mean, conveniently, when it talks about uh, uh, carrying out ordinary activities of daily life, in parentheses it mentions eating and sleeping, but it conveniently leaves out some of the other activities of daily life, <clears throat> such as urinating, defecating, dressing and undressing. And I don't really think we want that to be occurring on the sidewalks in Northampton. Um, so I strongly urge the council to reconsider the language of this resolution. I think everyone in this room is for vibrant sidewalks, uh, but I think that we need to rethink uh, how to get there. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's his name? Uh, that's Charles O'Neill. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, O'Neill. Uh, Aaron Cantrell, please. Hi there. I'm Aaron Cantrell of 45 Fort Hill Terrace, and um, I'm here to support the drone resolution as well. Um, I'm kind of coming at it from a little bit of a different perspective. I'm a re recent Hampshire alum and co-founded a small product design and mechanical design company um, in the area here and basically um, we've talked a lot about militarized drones already and I wanted to touch a little bit more on civilian and agricultural uses and the multitude of uses which um, are you know beneficial to society and not encroaching on our personal freedom and our personal privacy and so the introduced proposed regulation by the FAA and on a more national scale um, Basically, as it is outlined, it pushes out smaller players in the field, not only in terms of research institutions or small private schools such as Smith 
or any of the other five colleges in the area um, for small companies that are trying to develop technologies that could help for agricultural uses and basically make you know our, our daily lives easier um, in many ways and also help um, what we do. It's, it's pushing them out because the certification process is prohibitive for small academic institutions, small companies, and um, basically the, the whole process, the cost of it, and it's, it's moving in the direction of supporting only Department of Defense type applications of this technology. And so um, it's also in doing that, um, we are no longer able to conduct research and develop products around this. Um, and it's essentially making it so that overseas, in many other countries, they become the larger players of this new kind of um, revolutionary technology that will have profound effects on our future here. And so I support the resolution and uh, want to say I urge you guys to vote for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Steve Susco, please. You are the last name on the list. <clears throat> yes, Susco, Steve Susco, 754 Bridge Road, S U S C O. So a win's a win, right? I was grocery shopping following your win on override day. I ran into one of your operatives proudly and merrily exclaiming, we won, we won, we beat you, ha ha and ya. Yeah. I tried to turn the conversation to something more intelligent than chest bumping and high-fiving, but to no avail. We won, we won. I wondered if, if the us mentioned in your sham flyer also won, or was it just we? Next morning, my neighbor called me such a story here, the husband in his mid-90s plus, still spry, still driving, still contributing. His spouse, sadly, er early 90s, advanced Alzheimer's, but they are still in there punching, taking care of their business, no burden to the city or government, but barely living on a 30-year-old pension and not, not making ends meet but as always, paying their taxes on time and in full. My neighbor asks me, what do we do now, Steve, now that they've passed their override? Where will we find the money? Prescriptions are climbing to $1,200 a month. You here have said, well, it's unfortunate, but it's imperative we maintain our status quo. And unfortunately, they aren't a special population as in your sham flyer and nothing can be done and oh well. Riding roughshod on the elderly and vulnerable, shame on you or we or us. Shame on the 9,000 plus of us too important or too busy or too whatever to participate and vote. Shame on our news media, shirkers of their duty. Not an independent questioning gear in your printing press, I suppose. Yes. Signs at publicly subsidized housing, renters encouraged to vote yes without the pain of paying, filling already unfilled, uh, un already unfilled positions, not layoffs, establishing slush funds. If I had a dollar for everyone I encountered voting uninformed yes, and then changing to no upon becoming informed, quote, oh, I don't want that, unquote, I'd pay my new tax burden and my neighbors and have some left for a run up to Scotty's. So a win's a win, right? No. A win based on a sham isn't a win, it's a sham. Thank you very much. And now, um, some, anyone who hasn't signed up who would like to speak? Okay, then I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 Uh, Council Murphy is away with, uh, with an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will open with uh, communications from the mayor. No. 
No communications, okay. Uh, so first up, we're going to the resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. Um, is it the preference that we pass reading or you want me to read this aloud? I think it's appropriate to read it. To read it, okay. Uh, so resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. Whereas urban planning professors, and you're gonna have to help me with this name again, Anastasia Lotkaido Sideris and uh, Rania Ehrenfuscht uh, identify five essential purposes of sidewalks in their compelling article, Vibrant Sidewalks in the United States. And whereas essential, these essential purposes can be described as follows. Movement. Sidewalks are how pedestrians move from one place to another. Elements, I think. It's elements, mm -hmm. isn't it, or purposes? Essential elements? Uh, it says essential purposes on the copy up here. Um, encounter. Sidewalks are places where you meet people, people you know, people you don't know, and people you might w not want to know. And sometimes this purpose of the sidewalk trumps the movement purpose, as in when a street fair temporarily closes a pathway to normal traffic. Sidewalks are where quote, spontaneous and planned festivities break the rhythm of everyday life and give the collective expression to people's joy, sorrow, or aspirations, close quote. Confrontation. Not every activity that takes place on a sidewalk is comfortable. Rallies and protests, sit-ins, or even talking loudly might be disruptive or violate social norms. Still, these activities should be rec uh, accommodated on democratic sidewalks. Survival. For some people, the sidewalk is home, and the only place where they can carry out the ordinary activities of daily life, of eating and sleeping. That the rest of us more commonly do indoors. Sidewalks are also often controversially the places where some people like panhandlers, street vendors, or day laborers go to earn a living. Beauty. Sidewalks can be a place of lush beauty with trees, plants, street furniture, art, and other items that give the sidewalk and the community it serves its own identity. <clears throat> and whereas the, a 2011 Nelson Nygaard design charrette focused on downtown Northampton called for sidewalks markedly widened and Main Street narrowed to shorten uh, the crosswalks, increasing safety, increase public space for foot traffic and in front of local businesses, and provide an opportunity for more benches. And whereas in 2005, a study entitled Northampton Streetscape Improvement Plan Main Street and Pleasant Street was prepared by Denig Design Associates and it called for, in addition to improving and widening the sidewalks, increased seating along Main Street and Pleasant Street. And whereas people are more likely to walk in areas that host a diversity of uses, and whereas street furniture allows for a city to be more of a community, an area to gather, share, and experience life together, and whereas benches provide pedestrians with an opportunity to sit, rest, wait for a bus, where there isn't adequate bus shelter space, meet a friend, or read the paper. And now therefore be it resolved that the Northampton City Council envisions sidewalks as spaces that can accommodate both enjoyable and disruptive activities, encourages a strategic review of both the Nelson Nygaard study and the Northampton Streetscape Improvement Plan, and calls for sidewalk improvements and expanded street furniture along the entire length of Main Street. I'll accept a motion, put it on the floor. So moves. Second. 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 Uh, Councilor Schwartz. So, um, I voted for this last time, and I certainly am in very much in support of the spirit. But I, um, the spirit of, uh, the spirit of the resolution, I'm in support of it. At the same time, I, I, I've heard from a couple of people, and um, and so I've, uh, the job of sort of. Communication has had its effect, and I've stared closer and harder and longer, which is, um, which is a good thing, and I appreciate the feedback. And I, I think that this language may be unnecessarily provocative for our mission. I think that um, we know what we mean by in disruptive activities, mm -hmm. but I, I, think that, I think that for a quick read, um, it's, it's unnecessarily stirring. Um, in a way that I think we could adjust. And I think that even in the, um, in the, the quoting of these essential purposes in the top of the resolution, again, I think it's fantastic for an intellectual uh, discussion and reflection. I think for messaging, it's, it's more complicated. I mean, I think we would all agree we're striving to not have people need to survive on the streets. 
right? But that, that's more of a discuss. I think there's more discussion in that. Mm -hmm. And I think to just present it in a paragraph, it's just, it's raising, it's creating opportunities for confusion and discussion that we can't do in a single printed page. We can't meet in a single printed page. So I, I'd like to consider an adjustment of the language, and I don't have a direct amendment yet, but I could come up with one if I, you know, if we go further. Uh, Council LaBarge, Councilor uh, Carney, and Councilor Tacey. Thank you. Um, I have great concerns. I've talked with Councilor Carney this week. I received um, a call from Judith Fine, had a lengthy talk with her, and apparently there are some other business owners who do have concerns with the language that Councilor Schwartz had just brought forth. And what I'd like to see happen is that we open it up and have a public hearing before we vote on this with the business owners here in the city of Northampton and let them come forth and let's talk about it. Where is the problem here that the business owners are having and see if we can change some language. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm really glad that we have heard at least from one citizen who came to speak on this resolution. Uh, again, this was on the agenda uh, June 4th or June 6th, mm -hmm. and that was right at the heels of you know what was a very public and highly contested controversy downtown. Um, and uh, just to give a little bit of context, uh, for those I agree with Councillor Schwartz, certainly not even looking at the resolution, but anyone reading the news newspaper article would think that this was a resolution by the city council to encourage disruptive behavior. And y you know, frankly, that's, that's not at all what, um, what was intended when I was drafting this. In fact, it was more, um, this was a response, this was intended to be a response to a specific situation that then was resolved by returning the benches. But our question then was, do we move forward with our ordinance that we had, which was um, to mandate a specific number of benches, the ordinance that uh, Councillor Adams drew up? And that seemed, you know, moot at that point because benches were back. But the, uh, the resolution that was drafted um, which again didn't seem appropriate to resolve that we return benches in the city of Northampton was really more of a way to start and it's hard to say start a conversation the conversation had already really been started by removal of benches but to um, to lay a context where whereby we could say this is what is and this is what is so those elements that are described above are probably what people wouldn't argue is not present on our sidewalks and streets downtown. So really it was just saying this is what is, this is what we see, and this is what some um, people who are do a lot of research on sidewalks and downtowns in the, in the area of planning describe as vibrant. They look at these things and this is what they describe. And so I looked at those and it said what we have in Northampton is certainly vibrant. And it acknowledges, it acknowledges that there is discomfort. There is a clash. I'm not attached to the language here, especially. Um, I see. I saw it as a way of stating what is what we see downtown in Northampton, and of then offering what has been uh, a response, what has been uh, discussed at a number of levels, at subcommittee levels, at transportation and parking, at others where we've actually invested in some studies downtown. We had the Nelson Nygaard study and others that really talked about increasing the public space. So it's really about um, having a conversation about how we use our downtown space, how we use public space. And um, that was really more of the intent. Uh, clearly, clearly um, some of the wording that was, was not my wording in fact, I, again, as you said, it's, it's uh, quoted from, from an article of, what, of uh, how vibrancy can be described. Uh, clearly that um, irked a number of people. And uh, uh, you know, it's interesting to me. And, and again, I'm, I'm not completely attached to, to that, but I found it really helpful. So again, I also agree that it's inadequate to have one member of the public come and speak to us if the whole purpose was to have 
uh, a broad conversation. It's also inappropriate for us to take to, to uh, decide on a second reading one week after the first reading, especially on a topic that's been bubbling for decades, as, as uh, somebody said to me when they, when they asked, what's the rush? So my question is, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not invested in having something railroaded through, but really I think that it's more appropriate to be, um, have a, a broad public conversation, one that um, invites all the people who are interested in this topic, and clearly there are so many with many different uh, opinions about how we use public space. So I would agree that um, before we uh, resolve what's written in here, we consider having a wide public forum, not immediately, but rather, um, as it was suggested by some business owners downtown, in the fall, after they've finished a lot of the busy uh, sidewalk sales and other um, events, this can be a really busy time, and give people an opportunity to come and speak and really talk about how we see our public space and, you know, where we can go from there. So I, I would support uh, having a public forum, having one that's really uh, as large as it can be, and here's from as many interested parties as can speak to this matter. I would hope that Mr. O'Neill would come and that um, those uh, shop owners and anyone, people who stood out and had protests, you know, uh, a month ago. So that's my thought on the matter. Uh, I think that folks can speak to that. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Tacey and then Councilor Specter. I don't think I've ever had so many calls over a resolution. Um, business owners, residents, um, so, it, and it's all, what is the rush? I mean, what is this? And and in uh, some other colorful language from, from some on uh, a resolution. And so I got online, and I can't say the name. Uh, you want to say it again give it another shot? Which one the, of the, the two women who yes. conducted the study? Well, I, I got online, and I tried to figure out just exactly what have they done and where has this been implemented. I really couldn't find anything in there, just that this was just their input or their their report and I don't I, I couldn't find the basis or, or where this has been tried or um, did you find something I'm, I'm asking I, I, I couldn't find it I do so if it's to me then I'll say yeah. uh, again this was a paper that was not um, it was it really looked at the history of how sidewalks have changed in the last few hundred years yeah. that they used to they used to really be uh, uh, wide public spaces People would go out and stand on soap boxes, yep. you know, and have, there were all sorts of activities that happened on sidewalks. And that with the, um, with the development of the car, the automobile and highways, the whole notion of sidewalks really kind of moved more towards um, how, to peop how to make it easy for people to move from here to there. And so what the, the, uh, the upshot of their piece is that those places that have vibrancy are areas where and and that's why i said i looked and i said wow what they're describing here is is pretty much what we have in northampton not saying what we should have what we encourage what we condone but what is we have all of those things that happen we have rallies and protests and street fairs and panhandlers and loiterers and all sorts of things so it was more like saying this is this is an example they're talking about a particular type of sidewalk and northampton happens to look like what they're describing. And so it just says, this is what is, and clearly there's discomfort. So, so we already have all of this. Oh, here. this isn't about encouraging anything, yeah. except if you look, except a look at those studies that in my opinion, when we, and when we talked about those, created more space for people, created more breathing room, so that those constituents that typically bump against each other are less likely to do so. But, you know, I agree that uh, there's something about describing what is, as this is described in this article, and, and then taking that as its entry point that um, uh, clearly provoked many people, many people felt provoked, as Councillor Schwartz said. That's not the intention here. And so, um, and again, I'm not completely attached to that language. What I'm attached to is the idea 
that we actually have a forum rather than say rather than say this is something that we need to have a conversation about what we need to do is set up a, a space a means a process whereby people can come and speak rather than just exchanging emails or phone calls or Facebook entries but a moderated <coughs> forum council respectful so I'm still yeah, yeah. I, I, I would actually uh, I would encourage a public hearing on this. This is a broader conversation. Yeah. Councilor Specter. So uh, this topic already, uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels mentioned this last week. At Edlu, we already um, talked about this and having a, a public conversation. We don't necessarily have to be the committee that sponsors that. We have begun that discussion. We've actually asked for the uh, city economic development person and for Peg Keller with um, Housing and Homeless to bring us the data they have so that we have some data there. We were talking about a large public forum, but it may be more appropriate to do this as a city council sponsored event. One of the things we may want to do, and again, I'm going to steal this now from Councilor Freeman Daniels, he suggested we um, refer this to Edlu because this is an economic development issue. It is something we have been discussing. We might be able to work on the language. It also then would provide an opportunity and a framework for a large public discussion. This does, and I, I want to applaud you, it does bring up a lot of really good topics and allows us to have that conversation. Um, so I just wanted you to know we were already planning on doing that, as we talked about last time. We do not need to do that and move ahead and be the ones who sponsor that. I'm perfectly happy if um, the council president wants to set this up as a, it may, may be more appropriate to have this be a council sponsored public forum. But well, if you allow me, um, that was directed and actually um, also as one of the sponsors. And I, I think that would be appropriate. I think it would be more appropriate than, say, Edlo, because that actually confers a certain status to a, one portion of the stakeholders that's already been discussed. Uh, uh, council Freeman Dames. Uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but uh, no, no I'd, fine. Like, I'd like to move to refer this to Edlu. There's a Second. motion made and seconded to move this to Edlu now on that point. Yeah, I, um, I understand the, uh, that the first word of the committee is economic, but... Uh, and development. Economic, yes. Um, but the, uh, the last two are land use, which uh, is the, has the broad uh, claim of, uh, of what happens on sidewalks and on the public, in the public space, as well as the private space. Um, I think that uh, much of what has been discussed here prior um, from Council LaBarge uh, and uh, Council Carney um, have, is actually mostly what a repetition of what we spoke about at Edlu uh, last month, and or actually earlier this month, I guess. So. Uh, I do think that, uh, and, and we spoke about a forum, and we spoke about how to structure it, and um, what and, and what we need to prepare, uh, what we need to have to prepare for, for such an event. Uh, I think that we're well, we're well on our way. It won't be. It's not going to happen next month. It's not going to happen immediately. Uh, so I, and, and of course, with any council committee, you know, all the all members of the council are encouraged to to uh, attend and to be to, uh, and they have a seat at the table. So I would recommend that. Uh, this come out of the Edlu uh, committee. Uh, Councilor Adams. I have a preference for the su suggestion of the council president. Um, I mean, why, why should stakeholders present to four members of the council if, if we can have a public forum they can present to the entire council? And also, Edlu's already discussed it. I think the appropriate next step would be ha to have a, a, a public forum with the full council. Thank you. If, if, if I could add, I mean, one of the one of the virtues of a resolution, arguably one of its strengths, is the fact that it promotes and provokes conversation and discussion and education on issues. I mean, that's it's why we bring them. I mean, there are times that we do perfunctory ones, recting, recognizing that everyone do, holds cancer and contempt, and that's not necessarily expanding this world's edification on that. But then on some of the issues, one, uh, all the other resolutions that we have today are actually in the hopes of provoking a conversation uh, and and getting in some sense promoting the sense of what the community also feels and the fact what would inspire this actually um councilman carney and i had a number of conversations and part of our mutual frustration was this does happen commonly it comes up frequently and unfortunately the conversation dies when the weather starts getting colder 
um, the discussion there is is left to the more extreme points that played out in social media when the benches were removed. Um, but at the same time, arguably, the issues weren't addressed. Just a lot of people feeling poorly at the end of it. And I think yeah, that this resolution, to that extent, has been successful. And if, it, and if it serves as an invitation for the community to get together and in the fall, to come and expand and, in, and continue the conversation past the, the summer days, then I think that's all to the good. And I think in that respect, this resolution will have been a success. Councilor Tacey. Yeah, because <clears throat> if we voted on it right now, I, 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 w I wouldn't support it. Um, and I would much rather a council-sponsored forum than sending us off to a particular committee. Uh, Council LaBarge. Yes, um, I would like to echo what our council at large, Jesse Adams, had recommended. I would like it to come to full city council for a forum. All right, so is there any more discussion on the motion to refer to Ed Lou? Oh, I'm not opposed to the committee the Edlu committee uh, taking this up and talking about it in their um, in their committee. What I would like to see, though, is a type of forum that would include not only all members of the council, but the mayor's office, the mayor himself, um, people who've already expressed you know their opinions. And again, this we're talking about something I that agree. would need would require considerable space and moderation. It would seem because there's. Um, very heated. There are very heated ideas about this topic. Uh, which one of you decided? Me. I'm I'm not, the floor. I, I just want to say, um, uh, I can't speak for the chair, but uh, I, I'm I'm not interested on, in um, sitting in Edlu and planning out a forum, and um, which we have talked about, and we understand that it's going to take some preparation. Um, not interested in doing that, and then. Have, having it done for the uh, and and not having the the committee sponsor it, so um, I, I don't know who on the council is going to going to actually prepare and plan for the forum. I'm suggesting that Edlu does it. If someone on the com on the council wants to do it instead, that's fine. But I'm I'm not interested in working at the committee level and then having the council sponsor it. Sorry. I, I, I was actually going to say a similar thing, <clears throat> but slightly differently. Is that we have started the work on this, but I I'm. I would just like to know if, if this group and how we set that up, if we're going to do a council-sponsored forum, I'm happy to uh, help with that setting up. You'll can chair I'm that. Your head I'm looking noting your sure. hesitation, but yes. No, but because I'm only hesitant, I, I agree that even today I did a little more work on our discussion about how Ed Lou was going to do this. And we just need to be instructed. If we're not going to be moving forward with this tonight, my my comfort level would be if we absolutely know that the council is going to sponsor this i would imagine in the fall in september because that's probably the earliest time that we can get a good crowd. fine and i'd be happy to work with the council president on the kind of ideas that we came up with but i just want to feel comfortable that we're actually going to do this and it sounds like there's the interest to do it now we actually have to say okay how are we going to move forward on doing this because we've already had that discussion and I just want to make sure I think that's what you're saying too that we're actually going to uh, you're saying a little different it, well, yeah. it, I think um, we're all speaking to the same issue with the same objective and uh, the difference being somewhat subtle but maybe a per, uh, more uh, an issue of, of perception so would it be possible for you and I and if you would like to be at that meet that we could meet and discuss this and bring it forward at the next council meeting that has some specifics attached to it Yes, I'd be fine. So Another we can meeting, discuss what we've uh, already <laughs> no. Or you can just refer to Edlu. <laughs> yes. Refer to Edlu and have Edlu. Uh, we could. Well, <laughs> um, I guess my concern is that there are a number of there are a number of folks who really worked on this resolution in the um, in the weeks coming up to it. And to be, con I, I think those of us, including Council Barge, Adams, and Dwight. Um, are interested in seeing how how a forum is set up. We don't, you know, and so it's not about not trusting that Ed Lou would do something or uh, being skeptical about, from it, for me, of having the name forum sponsored by the Committee on Economic Development and Housing and Land Use. Yeah. 
but rather um, just being able to be involved yeah. in the process. I, let me just address that. So I know we have an EDLU meeting coming up, I believe it's next Tuesday at um, 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Um, it's not on the agenda. So, okay. It can be, yeah. it can be maybe late a late file. But late file. Can we get that in? If you wanted to do that, and, you, and that would be a discussion about how to set it up. I mean, again, I just want to make sure we actually move this along because I think we, we have a meeting, one more meeting next time, and then we have a break. We're going to have a meeting in, in July. Um, uh, Council Brown. Um, no, I think that's great. What I'm a little worried about is hearing just that um, there might be a hesitation of the subcommittee to sponsor it unless it is billed as a forum sponsored by EDLU. Oh. And so I think, you know, if that. Um, I'm not attached to it. Okay. Because I think I'm not what I'm hearing as long from as other counselors. As long as all I'm saying is I want there to be a forum, and because we already started talking about it, discussing it, putting some things in place. We have some input on that, and we actually know what's going to happen. And, and we would then stop doing any planning on that. I'd be happy to work with whoever is going to sponsor it. But well, no. to, to the uh, uh, proposed referral, may I suggest that this, in fact, be referred to Ed Lou for purposes of discussion of creating a forum for the city council to be sponsored by the city council at large. Is that an okay amendment? It's okay with me. The friendly amendment? Yeah. For the referral? Yeah. Sounds good. All right, on the referral, all those in favor of referring the uh, uh, initial discussion of creating a forum for, <laughs> this is a very long referral, uh, for uh, the Vibrant Sidewalks Resolution, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. That's resolution number one. And that, uh, this is in second reading. This is upon the recommendation of the Northampton Youth Commission. It's a resolution in support of regulating high capacity weapons. Or as the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution protects an individual's right to own weapons, but does not preclude the regulation and promotion of responsible ownership and possession. And whereas the technology of weaponry available to the public has advanced to include guns capable of meeting out vast indiscriminate death and injury. And whereas absent laws requiring universal qualification or background investigation, Dangerous people are able to acquire these weapons and inflict horrible wanton trauma to communities. And whereas the Youth Commission of Northampton has organized and expressed their profound concern for the future and well-being of their city and home and have petitioned the Northampton City Council to call for sensible gun control measures that include universal background checks, a ban on weapons defined as assault weapons, and a limitation on the capacity of ammunition magazines. And whereas over 250 Northampton residents between the ages of 13 and 18 signed a petition calling for a resolution by the Northampton City Council to express the appeal and support for the gun control measures proposed by President Barack Obama. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council supports the call of its younger citizens for the reasonable and effective gun control measures proposed by the President to be reintroduced to the Congress and advanced for a vote and to be ratified at deliberate speed and be it further resolved that the Northampton City Council calls upon President Barack Obama, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator William Cowan, actually probably now will be uh, <laughs> Senator Edward Markey, and Congressman Jim McGovern to consider the concern expressed by Northampton's youth as they pursue these protections with urgency, diligence, and determination. And be it further resolved that copies of this resolution shall present to President Barack Obama, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator William Cowan, and Congressman James McGovern. Is there a motion to put it on the floor? Move to approve. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? I like the part about the background checks, but the rest of it I won't support. So if it's all going to be inclusive, I will vote no. Uh, I love the part about the background checks. Uh, Council of Art. Um, I support all of the language, and I'm very proud to see our youth and our city to come forth and show and express their encouragement of doing this resolution. It means a lot. They're speaking out. And I think it's something that's extremely valuable. I think not just in this city, but all over. Um, I, I would add to what I said before is that actually I think um, I feel actually a moral duty for a number of reasons to advance this, not the least of which was it was inspired by um, some people who can't even vote. 
still have the same vested interest in the community as any of us. And the fact that these are quite reasonable calls, in fact, actually many of them pre-existed to this point and the, and the country was uh, provably safer as a result. Um, there's all sorts of arguments relative to and you know, pro and con on gun control, and that's not essentially what this is made about. But I think there's also a moral imperative to the citizens at large beyond just the youth that um, speak to us pretty clearly here. And this is a significant portion of this, this cohort. And I, I, whatever we can do to, to reinforce, first of all, their citizenry, but more importantly, their, their, the spirit and the intent of their issue, I think it's incumbent upon us to vote in favor of this. Uh, Councilor Carney. I just want to reiterate, um, the, I'm, I'm really heartened to see a group of youth wanting to uh, participate in the process, in the governmental process, and see that they can have an impact by stating by stating their concerns about such a very serious issue any further discussion all those in favor of the resolution please say aye aye, aye. aye. and opposed no and any absent the resolution passes in second read next up this is the resolution calling for justice in guantanamo bay since we've read the other resolutions, I will also read this one. Whereas the practice of holding people in Guantanamo Bay Naval Base Detention Center, hereafter referred to as Guantanamo Bay Detention Center, represents a continuation of a, of a repudiated foreign policy and a stain upon the character of the United States. And whereas over 100 of the 166 remaining prisoners at Guantanamo Bay Detention Center have been in a hunger strike for over 98 days to protest the lack of basic human and legal rights as outlined by the U.S. Constitution and international law. And whereas 86 prisoners have been cleared for release since 2010 by an interagency task force, yet continue to be detained. And whereas it is wrong for any country, for any reason, to detain someone for over 11 years and not charge him with a cri any crime. And whereas the United Nations have declared that the continued imprisonment of the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center prisoners is a flag quote, flagrant violation of international human rights law and in itself constitutes a form of cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. And whereas the United Nations condemned the coercive practice of force feedings of hunger striking prisoners of the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center as a form of torture and a violation of medical ethics, and whereas Residents of Northampton have long struggled to close the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center from the activism of no more Guantanamos to hunger striking residents to the acts of civil disobedience to a Northampton proclamation de denouncing the torturous conditions of Guantanamo on June 22, 2011. And whereas other municipalities from the nearby town of Amherst to the city of Berkeley have acted forthrightly to address the injustices, the injustices at Guantanamo Bay by offering to be accepted by offering to accepted clear prisoners in their communities. And whereas President Obama pledged to close the prison in over five years ago and recently stated that the prison, quote, is not necessary to keep America safe, it's expensive, it's inefficient, it hurts us in terms of international standing, it lessens cooperation with our allies in counterterrorism events, then therefore be it resolved that the Northampton City Council calls upon our federal representative and senators to advocate and act forthrightly to see justice done in Guantanamo Bay. And be it resolved we call upon President Obama to maintain his pledge to close Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. And be it resolved that the City of Northampton opposes the continued existence of the Guantanamo Bay Detention Center and the violation of the rule of law that it represents and calls for all its prisoners to be charged or released. And be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be sent to the President, the Attorney General of the United States, the United States Senator <coughs> of Massachusetts, and the United States Representative for Massachusetts 2nd District. Is there a motion for on the floor? So moved. Second. Councilor Tayson. I, uh, I go back to what I said before. Um, I know that President Obama said he would close it in 12 months after he was elected. For some reason, it's not closed, whether it's Congress or whatever it is. I don't know why it's not closed. Usually, you can make a decision on something at these in these chambers that is based on the facts that you can actually put your hands on. 
we can do it right here in the city of Northampton. But I really do not have a clue as to why it's still open, why it hasn't closed, and I don't, I don't know anything about it. But apparently something is amiss because the president has not closed it in 12 months. So anyway, uh, I, I won't support it because I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Councilor Specter. Well, you actually can find, put your hands on why it wasn't closed. It was in, I believe, 2009. It might have been in early 2010. The president did float that he wanted to close Guantanamo. The attorney general said he wanted to close Guantanamo. And the Republicans in Congress said, no way are we going to do this. We will not fund any transfer of prisoners. We will not give any money for it. And so they backed off. So there's your answer right there. So it's not necessarily, as you might be implying, that there was some new knowledge that the president had and he changed his mind all of a sudden. It was pretty clear. He came out with his attorney general and said, we should close this. They actually had a specific recommendation of a prison in Illinois to send the prisoners to. And Congress said, we will pay nothing to do that. It's a federal prison. So you can go and look it up and look at the closing from that period in 2009, 2010. I, I, I read that. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Councilor you'll uh, if you're going, uh, all right. I, I, if you direct, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. Not, not a back and forth. But I, I did. I did read it. I read all the reports on it. And, uh, somewhere along the line, um, there's got to be a reason why it has not. Why, why they did not fund it? Something. Somebody must know something that I don't know. Uh, yeah, the reason is that the Republicans are in a mortal combat with President Obama starting in 2008. But um, I hope that uh, you. The Councilor Tacey uh, can, would agree that there may be a lot of reasons, some of them even um, ones that compel people uh, for doing things um, in this world or through the U.S. government that are unconstitutional. And perhaps even if they're constitutional, they're wrong. In other words, there are reasons people may have reasons they may offer them or they might keep them secret but the reasons are still wrong and that's what we have here and you don't need special information you just need your common sense and um, your understanding of natural rights which Guantanamo Bay is a violation of thank you uh, council the barge and then council Tacey yeah thank you just have to look at this language on this resolution and there's no question about it it is definitely a civil rights is issue and it's definitely inhuman of them doing what they're doing to just go ahead and detain and no charges is definitely a violation of their civil rights and it's a human issue a human rights issue uh, Councilor Tacey. I just want to say that I'm a registered independent. I don't play the Democrat and Republican role either way. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion on, the, on this resolution? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. No. And abstentions. So, it is passed and seconded. Um, and now we have a, a new resolution, which you heard about on uh, in public comment. And this is a resolution. It's. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a late file. So, moves to suspend late file rule. Suspend rule 38. Second. All those in favor of suspending rule. Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, this is the resolution on drone aircraft. One, navigable airspace and drone aircraft. Whereas the former city councilor and mayor of Northampton, Calvin Coolidge, is president of the United States, signed into law the Air Commerce Act of 1926, establishing the national airspace system in the United States. And whereas this act declared that the airspace above the minimum safe altitudes of flight, generally understood to be about 500 feet or more above the surface, is navigable airspace. And whereas uh, whereas the two whereases here, whereas foreign and domestic aircraft, include drone aircraft, have statutory quote right of transit close quote through navigable airspace, and whereas the navigable airspace is preempted by federal laws and therefore not subject to state and local control, 
And whereas the Congress and the FAA are now expanding navigable airspace down to the ground in order to accommodate low-flying drone aircraft, and whereas such an expansion of navigable airspace threatens long-standing property rights, expectations of privacy, and state and local sovereignty, and whereas such an expansion of navigable airspace gives the FAA unprecedented authority to restrict any landowner activity that could potentially interfere with low-flying drone aircraft, <clears throat> and whereas such an expansion of navigable airspace is contrary to the findings of the landmark, landmark 1946 Supreme Court case, United States versus Cosby, which affirmed that the landowner, quote, must have an exclusive control over the immediate reaches of the enveloping atmosphere, close quote, and that, quote, the landowner owns at least as much of the airspace as they can occupy or use in connection with the land. And whereas such an expansion of navigable airspace is contrary to the aviation statutes in Title 49 of the United States Code, which have been in force largely unchanged since President Coolidge first signed them into law in 1926. Surveillance and weaponized drone aircraft are two. Whereas drone aircraft are po poised to gain unprecedented access to private property at any altitude and for any purpose, including but not limited to the purpose of advertising, news sports reporting, environmental monitoring, package delivery, recreation, and, and private investigations. And whereas police departments in the United States have begun using drone aircraft in the absence uh, of clear guidance from lawmakers. And whereas some drone aircraft have been marketed to law enforcement agencies are designed to carry weapons including tear gas, rubber buckshot, and firearms. And the introduction of such technology sends a chilling message to the American people. And whereas the rapid development of drone aircraft technology, driven largely producing, uh, driven largely producing drone aircraft for military use, poses a, th a serious threat to the privacy and constitutional rights of the American people, including the residents of Northampton. And whereas the federal use of weaponized drone aircraft overseas is a poor precedent for their domestic use in that the extrajudicial extra use of drones has turned public opinion against the United States government in Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia, and Afghanistan. And whereas drone aircraft strikes have killed more non-targeted people than those targeted, including men, women, and children, some known by name and others unidentified, be it resolved that the Northampton City Council calls on the U.S. government to immediately end its practice of, a, a practice of extrajudicial killing by armed drone aircraft, and be it further resolved that the City of Northampton affirms that within the city limits, the navigable airspace for drone aircraft shall not be expanded below the long-established air, airspace for manned aircraft, and be it further resolved that the City of Northampton affirms that within the city limits, landowners subject to state laws and local ordinances have exclusive control of the immediate reaches of the airspace and that no drone aircraft shall have the, quote, public right of transit, close quote, through this private property. And be it further resolved that Northampton, the City of Northampton calls on the United States Congress, the Federal Aviation Administration, and the General Assembly of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to respect legal precedent and constitutional guarantees of privacy, property rights, and local sovereignty in all matters pertaining to drone aircraft and navigable airspace. I'll accept the motion and put this on the floor. So, so moved. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. Uh, well, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay, Councilor Daniels, then no, I, I, I'll wait. Councilor Tails. I think it's a real invasion of your privacy to use the drone aircraft in the United States. I think it's, um, I think it's very, I think it's really overreaching. I didn't, I didn't care so much about they maybe want to track my phone call or listen or, or look at my email. I'm gonna find. <laughs> There's nothing in my phone calls or email that's gonna excite anybody. Uh, but um, I think this is this is a stretch. This is a real reach. This is overreaching. Um, by the government, and to limit to limit technology and advancement in it by small business and things such as that, I think, is detrimental to our economy, to the way things grow. You're you're crushing people's rights to to do business. Um, I just uh, I'm going to support it. I'll support this resolution without without even a second thought. Um, Councilor, uh, Councilor LaBarge, then Councilor Carney. I think M Maureen had her hand. Hand up first, Councilor oh, Carney. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, I support this resolution, and I also find it um, 
really interesting because of the local implications. Um, it's certainly, it, it's very interesting to have the reference to President Calvin Coolidge, former mayor of Northampton, former city councilor, um, but also the present day implications as uh, Professor Voss pointed out here, that we have um, you know, a highly respected innovative engineering program at Smith College and the implications of the, what's going on right now in terms of making all of that lower space into navigable space um, really squ squashes the uh, potential of those departments. And, and for the purpose of creating more room for uh, certified registered drone aircraft to use that same space. So yeah, I, um, I'm really troubled by the policy moves by the FAA. And I mean, we're a small city in Western Massachusetts. It would be interesting to see how, uh, if this passes tonight, uh, how this is received in Washington and whether, you know, I, I'm hoping that there'll be at least some um, effort then by our own representatives in Congress to and the senators to, um, to really look very seriously at what kind of implications they have. That's just that piece Then I'm also highly troubled uh, by the use of drones to um, not only spy on uh, American citizens, but the way that they've been used to kill um, innocent men, women, and children all over the world. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I uh, just have a technical element about this um, resolution. It it looks like a combination of sponsorship by uh, councilors and um, citizens. It's like a sort of a hybrid between that, between a normal measure and a citizen's initiative. Uh, I really appreciate the um, the speeches by uh, Professor Voss and the other members during public comment, but uh, I move, I, I don't think we can, uh, the council would be acting appropriately by having them um, co-sponsor this. So I, I move that the we strike uh, the co-sponsors after uh, Councilor Spector. Second. Uh, this is to the motion to uh, Councilor Tacey? Second. No. It, oh, okay. It's to the motion, Councilor Carney. I would just ask, um, is there something that you read in our uh, in our rules that will prohibit? I mean, I, I, I it's directed uh, to you. Yes. Uh, thank you. I um, my understanding is that any uh, any um, measure that is uh, not initiated by the council or the executive branch uh, is a citizen initiative, which we would need uh, 250 signatures collected from all the wards in the city and so on. But a combination? Or, uh, I couldn't say. Uh, to, to the point, <coughs> the amendment, uh, I, I think Councilor Freeman Daniels actually points out something that's, that I think needs to be reconciled at some point, but I think right now for the, the for uh, the purpose of this resolution, I think it's reasonable to uh, remove these sponsors. We know that they sponsor it. I mean, we know, um, and maybe historically they will not be represented on this document, but that means they'll be targeted less easily. And um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, Councilor Spector. Yeah, I'm going to support this ordinance as well, and I, I, I agree. Just well, actually, we're speaking to the motion. The motion to the motion amend to strike. Amend. Yeah, uh, I would, I, if you'll wait, I'll let yes. you at the floor. Fine. I, I, I would like to move that question. Okay. Second so all that. those in favor of striking the citizens' sponsors listed on this, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Now, Councilor Spector. Well, I'd like, to, to, I'd like to, to thank the sponsors who were just stricken here from this. Um, and I think one of the things that was really heartening to see uh, the folks from Holyoke come and to know that this is going to move to another town, because I think that's one of the key things here is that this is now a place where we are beginning something. And I think other towns, we're going to make sure Amherst knows about this and Holyoke. So thank you very much for bringing it forward. And uh, it was really, it was great to have you have bring other people in here to let us know it's moving beyond this, this council. Uh, Councilor Tacey. Yeah, I would kind of wonder what the, uh, what the penalty is for violating their their code or their their law or something. Well, unfortunately. Uh, for an inch, I know, I know, but if it's an inch above the grass or or, uh, I mean, what about my hammock? Yeah. That's attached to the It's attached to a tree, I hope. <laughs> but your, your paper airplane. If I can speak to this, um, 
Yeah, I've been in consultation with uh, Professor Voss and Jeff Napolitano and Paki actually for uh, about this some time for some time now. Uh, one of the concerns, of course, is bringing it out on top of all the other resolutions, and, I'll, and, and Councilor Barge, you can follow, um, was that you know the the standard knock against resolutions. I, I talked about earlier before what the good parts of resolutions are. Standard knock is like, well, who the hell is Northampton City Council to say these things? Well, by the way, this is unprecedented. Um, there, are, uh, this, what we're seeing happen actually, the FAA rules are pending and there's very little coverage or very little alarm and technology far outstrips law and the protections that law afford and and I was giving uh, an example earlier to Council Labarge during prohibition uh, rum runners were easily busted because phones are relatively new there was no problem about wiretapping anybody could go and tap a phone and listen to their conversations and arrest them based on the conversations they heard in the course of those conversations because the law had caught up now great that the law enforcement was able to do that perhaps but more importantly was the was the was the seeding of privacy rights and the rights for you I mean we're all you know we're all steeped in this discussion about the NSA's uh, data mining uh, uh, you know, phone monitoring and things like that. Uh, we are in a new age where technology increases exponentially and the laws plod along very slowly as proof tonight. This is the process by which laws are created. We are asking uh, the government to give this a lot more scrutiny than seems to have been given certainly with a scrut scrutiny with an eye towards protecting our rights as citizens mm -hmm. and not seeding and the airspace an inch above the ground because none of us can sink lower than that radar and i think that i i have a feeling that we are at the same time it's it's it might be a difficult concept to wrap your mind around and i certainly don't subscribe to a lot of paranoid notions that people have often extolled this actually gives me chills. This concerns me a great deal. And also, part two. Part two, we, under Gerald Ford, we actually we decided that we were not going to <coughs> sign off on assassinations, that we were not going to participate in assassinations. Now, the argument here is that we are at war, but a lot of these actual actions, these surgical strikes by drones, are point of fact assassinations. And they are authorized and easily done and prosecuted with uh, drones. And we have seen the worst, I hope we've seen the worst of what drones can do. And at this, on the other side, we are stultifying the best that they can do. And I think it's really incumbent upon us to say, leave our homes alone. Don't leave the drones alone. I think that we, it is, we, we are seeding far too much about what it means to be a U.S. citizen and what it mean, what the Constitution means. We've been nibbling, uh, nibbling at the edges for some time, and it's a death of a thousand cuts, and we will lose all the virtues contained in that document if we continue to sit back in silence and allow this to go by without, at the very least, saying rather clearly, we don't agree. Um, Councilor Adams, did you have your hand up? Okay, Councilor Tacey. Uh, Councilor Labarge is next. I'm sorry, Councilor Tacey, and then Councilor Tacey. Yes. Um, I'm definitely, I'm telling you right now, I'm not happy about this. I want to thank the citizens who came in and talked about what this resolution was all about. I find this also to be a violation of human rights. And I know that every one of us, we have our rights to our privacy and our property. And I would not appreciate having something like this in back of my property. I think it's wrong, and I'm glad this came forth, and it needs to go where we're sending it. So we could probably expect something out of Congress like in early 2300? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't know what to expect from. I, I don't think we'll see much of anything. Out no, of I don't. For some time, but although immigration reform is just. Been, so. 
So mm -hmm. that'll be also in 2300. That could be. Uh, any other discussion on the motion? Uh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? The abstentions? Passes first reading, and the second reading will be at our meeting in July. And it's time for one minute announcements. <laughs> Who's got something to say? Uh, okay, Council Specter, then Council Um On Tuesday, July 2nd, here in Council Chambers at 7 o'clock, uh, there'll be a meeting of about Some parking in the Brown Hill Road office. neighborhood. So that's right here this coming Tuesday, July 2nd at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Council Lubart. Yes. Um, I was at a meeting at the district attorney's office this week um, on a citizens board advisory committee. And I just wanted to give you heads up um, so you could look at your calendars and mark the date. Um, it's save the date, 11 November 20th, 2013, Youth Mental Health. And it's the second annual Safe School Summit and it's going to be at the Claritin Hotel and Conference Center at 7.45 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. and a reception to follow. And what they are actually going to be doing is ta targeting audience such as school bus drivers, cafeteria attendants, nurses, school community partners, superintendents, principals, deans, teachers, guidance counselors, and school resource officers. And I heard it, it's going to be a very well-planned conference. I hope so. <laughs> it sounds pretty big. Uh, Councilor Adams. Also sponsored by the Northwestern District Attorney's Office on Wednesday, October 16th from 8 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at Greenfield Community College is the second annual Youth Conference on Substance Abuse Prevention with the keynote speaker, Dr. Marisa Silveri. Thank you. Any other announcements? Thank you, Jesse. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I, I want to, uh, this is a past announcement. I want to thank the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association for sponsoring the uh, override forum that took place uh, June uh, 19th. I want to thank uh, Councilor Tacey for volunteering to uh, represent the, uh, the uh, opponents to the override and, and uh, the, our mayor for representing the uh, proponents. It was uh, the only forum that I know of that uh, allowed for interaction um, in the city. And uh, I thought it was very valuable and very well attended, and the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association does it again. Thank you. Any other one-minute announcements? We will um, now recess for finance. And the chair of finance is not here. Um, so in his stead, I will serve as the chair and ask the court to call the roll. Yes. Council Yes. Present. Here. Okay. Um, <laughs> the mayor is present. I'm not sure if the mayor wants to. Uh, why, why don't you step up, Your Honor, and um, and Susan Wright's here as well. Um, why don't actually? Why don't you give your narrative first? Okay. Well, certainly. Um, well, obviously, as as. The council knows the um, the voters on Tuesday uh, voted in favor of the uh, proposition two and a half override question uh, to allow the city to uh, raise an additional 2.5 million in revenues. Um, and as as outlined when I made the proposal, um, because that's now been accepted, I'm coming back to you with a couple of orders um, in in response to that outcome. Um, uh, I'm not sure the order you have them on your agenda. Um, uh, the first uh, one of them is uh, is a, a revised um, order uh, that um, this would be the um, the appropriation for the general fund budget, um, and so we've updated the numbers to reflect the additional revenue uh, that we would be putting uh, into the general fund budget, as well as a second order. Um, which is to uh, create and then appropriate funds to uh, the new um, Fiscal Stability Override Stabilization Fund, uh, which was part of the plan that I put forward. Um, and so those are the two revised orders that I'm submitting tonight. Um, 
and uh, and I included with that a memorandum uh, to the council, uh, which outlined um, how uh, we would, um, allocate um, uh, the the additional 2.5 million, and it's a you know fairly brief listing of them. Um, and we've also gone ahead uh, based on these numbers, and we've we've updated the revenue um, sections and the. Exp uh, the summer expense summary sections of the budget book that you have um, so we can give you those which you can sort of insert we're not going to reprint the entire budget we figure it's it's four to six pages we're going to just give you an addendum that you can slide into your budget books uh, so we've prepared that as well for you but I'm happy to answer questions that you have about it um, go through it whatever whatever well, the finance can I'm, be with I'm trying to consider procedure given the given the amount of orders that we the financial orders that we have here and I was going to ask the finance committee to consider uh, recommending moving to the floor the entire group of orders including the uh, this is the the uh, amended FY 2014 general fund budget of 77 million seven hundred sixty five thousand and five dollars to this full city council that the, uh, just the amended all right so that's pretty much all we have to refer so we don't have to do all the items and, and that way we can open up the council floor to be in the, on the council floor if, if but I will accept a motion for I would like to uh, refer this right to the council second it Okay, so this is uh, with a recommendation back to the council? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, it's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, with that, I will. Um, we have no other financial orders other than that. Just, what do we got? What do we got? Free cash. Free cash, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Free cash. Stabilization one you talked about. Right. Okay. This is uh, what the mayor was just referring to. This is pursuant to Chapter 45B of the Mass General Laws of the City of the Council hereby authorized the creation of a fiscal stability or override stabilization fund for the purpose of supplementing the general operating costs of the city and the schools in future fiscal years, fiscal year 2014, vote to raise and appropriate the sum of seven hundred and seventy three thousand dollars and uh, seven hundred seventy three thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars to this fund is there a motion to recommend Move to recommend second. second okay it's moving second any discussion on this all those in favor aye aye, aye. Uh, we also have, upon the recommendation of uh, Mayor David G. Narco, it's ordered that $200,000 from the FY13 general fund undesignated fund balance, otherwise known as free cash, be appropriated to the capital stabilization fund. Uh, accept the motion? Uh, yeah. I'd or would you put motion. it on the floor? You yes. want it? Okay. And it's seconded. Second and you'd like to discuss it, Councilor Tate? Yeah, I'd like to just yeah. a brief explanation. Sure. Um, you may remember, um, and I can uh, refer you to it, um, in my, when I presented the budget, um, actually trying to pull it up, I had indicated um, at the time that, uh, I think it was in my message, but I certainly know it was something that we discussed. Um, uh, my intention to, as we got to the close of the fiscal year, um, to uh, appropriate some of the free, uh, remaining free cash that we had in 2013 into our stabilization fund. Um, again, as part of our overall effort to rebuild our, our stabilization reserve accounts. Um, and uh, again, if we, if, we, um, if we do this now before the close of the fiscal year, then that money stays in those stabilization accounts and those funds. If we don't, that free cash after June 30th um, flows to sort of frozen until free cash is certified in FY14. I would like to invest that into our stabilization uh, funds, which serves the purpose of rebuilding those funds, but also, uh, you know, the larger goals we've talked about in terms of um, restoring those funds for our bond rating purposes as well. I guess what I, I, the question I really wanted to to explain yeah. to the public is the difference, I guess, between, do you have two here for $200,000? One's a capital stabilization. Yes. A stabilization. Exactly. And so we have, to get that. yeah, so we have, two, we have, uh, well, 
possibly after tonight we'll have three stabilization funds but uh, we have a, a general stabilization fund which is an uh, which is usually for general purposes again it requires a two-thirds vote of this council in order to appropriate money out of that fund um, and it's intended to be for emergencies that arise uh, during the year um, and then the capital stabilization fund is on a similar vein but it's for primarily directed for capital expenses um, and those are two of the more common uh, stabilization funds that cities and towns create and again those rem those sort of remain through the budget uh, once the budget year closes they remain intact um, anything else that's not in one of these uh, funds that's been approved that's a mass general law approved fund will flow to free cash um, and and we lose any access to it until it gets recertified um, so I mean it's it's so it's sort of a twofold reason uh, for wanting to do this and I was quickly trying to scan but I, I remember it, at some point when I first submitted the budget to you I had indicated that depending on how those funds looked at the end of the year we wanted to do this we wanted to come forward with an order uh, to, to put some of it as we did at the close of the last fiscal year okay um, I, I just yeah. wanted to identify the two because they're pretty identical in indeed. numbers and everything so indeed just yes okay. thank you yep uh Councilor Freeman Daniels you have a question so these are just we have to move them out of free cash into two slush funds so that uh th we don't lose access to them before they're I wouldn't certain. use the term slush fund I don't know if that's what you were talking about uh, uh, all right. uh, the stabilization oh, fund sorry, stabilization. Would be the terminology oh, I might use um, <laughs> uh, yeah in between snow and ice yeah exactly uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> Councilor Freeman Daniels was using some liberties to poke fun um, I didn't mean to mix the two of these up no no I think that's right. fine yeah and we're and on the one so we're now talking about the uh, first one which is uh, and and I don't know if you're ready to vote or if anyone wants to hear any more from the mayor on this point yeah okay all those in favor of the two hundred thousand dollars from FY 13th general fund undesignated undesignated balance fund balance uh, be appropriated for capital stabilization please say aye aye and okay the next one is also upon the and as Councilor Tacey pointed out it's very similar upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz two hundred thousand dollars from the FY 13 general fund undesignated fund balance otherwise known as free cash be appropriated to the stabilization fund I'll move, uh, accept a motion to uh, refer to recommend uh, consultation second. second okay any discussion any further discussion uh, all those in favor aye Councilor Tacey aye I, I was good so okay. I was reading I know just want to make sure because if you don't vote we don't get a majority vote so it does uh, okay now we can close move to close finance Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning out of finance, please say aye. 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 Still reading. All right. We're back to the regular council meeting, and uh, I'm I'm still presiding. Uh, okay. Well, guess what we're up to. Okay. Take a second. So the what's first coming to you is the amended. All right, I'm. This is the amended language here. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor, ordered that the sum of seventy-seven million seven hundred and sixty-five thousand and five dollars, which is the full amount necessary for the fiscal year twenty fourteen general fund budget, July first, two twenty thirteen to June thirtieth, twenty fourteen, be appropriated for the purposes stated. To meet this appropriation, $1,728,110 will be raised and appropriated from parking meter receipts reserve, $25,000 from Cemetery Perpetual Care Trust Fund, $10,000 from Cemetery Sale of Lots Receipts Reserved, $1,713,905 from uh, the Sewer Enterprise Fund, $855,531 from the Water Enterprise Funds, 97,547 
dollars from the solid waste enterprise funds, six thousand dollars from wetlands filing fees, three thousand dollars from waterways fund, <coughs> uh, $12,145 from the Community Preservation Act Administrative Funds, $160,000 from Comcast INET Reserve Fund, $145,000 from energy rebates, and $34,154 from the Reserve Police <coughs> Station uh, Debt Service, and $72,974,613 will be raised and appropriated. Second. Uh, we, I'm sorry, there's the motion to... Uh, I will accept a motion to amend. Amend. So, so moved. moved. And uh, any discussion on the amended? Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, we can now put the motion on the floor now that it's. Uh, uh, first of all, we can now actually we have to vote on the amendment. Vote on the amendment and then. Right. Okay. So. Sorry, Mr. Uh, yes. Vote on We're voting on the amendment. Yes. Okay. Are you all ready? Any, Wait, any discussion? Councilor Freeman Daniels? The amendment is the additional funds raised from the override. <coughs> right. and then I, I think we should hear from the mayor about how. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thank you again. Um, uh, you, um, you may remember when I, I didn't bring the big chart, but I got the smaller version that you have um, uh, that we uh, proposed um, when we put the override package forward, we proposed uh, some allocations of how we would do that broadly. Um, and obviously, uh, at the time, uh, we were projecting uh, 726285 into city budget, uh, public schools a million dollars, override stabilization 773715. This memo that I provided gives a little bit more of a detailed breakdown on that. Um, Northampton Public Schools, you'll see the, the first item uh, would receive 985, um, but then you have to quickly follow below that to see that that additional 15,000 is going, it's going to go into the central services budget, but it's for purposes of funding the custodial position at the <coughs> AFK pool, which was one of the budget cuts that the school department had to make. Um, uh, you can then see that we create the fiscal stability override stabilization fund for the 773 715, which you'll have an order uh, later on uh, to create and appropriate. Um, and then we have uh, some of our, uh, well, the salary reserve, um, the capital stabilization fund, uh, which again are these were um, investments that we feel are critical to make, again, to get those funds back up to the level that they need to be at in order to maintain. Um, our, our bond rating. Police is obviously one of the ones that was discussed. That's to restore the four patrol officer positions at 188,000. Um, uh, 75,000 is for our uh, capital uh, project uh, budget, um, which again is the funding that we have on hand to be able to fund uh, capital projects as they, as they come up. Uh, we wanted to bring that up to a, a, a more realistic level. And then the the next uh, series of them, there's a DPW um, increase uh, or restoration to uh, two of their seasonal laborers that were eliminated uh, as part of the cuts. Um, and then the remainder of them, you'll see our restoration of cuts that we needed to make to the O&M uh, budgets of several of our city departments, uh, central services, uh, the public safety dispatch, uh, building inspections, board of health, treasurer, planner, collector, uh, and even the city clerk. Um, when we were meeting with department heads uh, to try to level uh, fund budgets, um, one of the things we did was go through sort of line by line each of their budgets and made cuts and largely on the O&M side uh, because in a small department like the treasurer's office where there's two people, um, and large, most of their discretionary budget is their O&M budgets. And so in some cases, in the case of the treasurer's office, for example, uh, we essentially you know, carved out a, a large chunk of his uh, O&M budget, which he uses for financial transactions, for the services that he um, uh, brings in when he's doing his title work um, and those kinds of things. Um, similarly, uh, with the collector, uh, the city clerk, um, that was another area that we had asked her to cut 
her O and M budget. But again, we know that she's going to be buying the supplies and the certified paper and the all the other things that she needs to carry out her duties in as the keeper of, of our uh, records. Um, and so this restores those cuts to, to keep those services level in those that lower section of cuts. But the big ones obviously are the schools and the fiscal stability over rise stabilization fund and the restoration of the police positions and the two DPW uh, seasonal positions as well. Um, in, actually, I'm just going to remind us as we continue on the discussion here, the, the, our opportunities on at least our authority allows us to cut or amend in some levels or and we're voting up or down on this budget so i would like to keep the debate on those points if that's possible uh council labarge yes um mayor on the northampton public schools mm -hmm. does this include busing also well it's uh interesting that you say that because i think well they they may be done. I don't know, but this my uh, the the school committee was meeting this evening as well, having a similar special meeting um, in anticipation of this meeting. And they, uh, the superintendent and the administrative leadership team, was going to be presenting to the school committee um, their recommendations for restoring uh, the cuts that have been made in their budget equal to the nine hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. I do know that um, in that recommendation that was going because I. Uh, was given a preview of it with the superintendent um, as the chair of the committee, they were recommending the restoration of busing to the high school, uh, which was one of the major items that was cut. Um, and so that was among the recommendations, um, as well as, you know, a restoration of uh, teaching positions, uh, school uh, supply and textbook budgets, uh, and, a, and a series of other um, items. Um, so that, again, that's what was being presented. The school committee has the final say as to those specific cuts. Uh, and I, I don't know the outcome of, of that discussion at this point. Um, I wasn't able to be in two places at once tonight. So, yeah. We appreciate your time. Yep. Uh, other further questions, uh, Councilor Yeah, it's kind of a, a statement. <clears throat> I, I intend to support this. Um, I don't do it without. I do it with some uh, apprehension. I, um, I do know that this has severely divided the city. And the the article, I, Bill Dwight had asked me on his radio one day about no hole versus hand. And I told him I did not make that distinction, and I still don't. Nor do I. I want the city to always want the city to speak with one voice. And the city has voted this override through. And it's severely divided the city for every four point, there was 4.6 people that voted for it and there was six people that voted or against it rather and six people that voted for it and that's fine there's no that's the way the vote turned out my only suggestion would have been in the media rather than this which is we have crushed the opposition picture would have been something more in the line of, I understand yeah. this has created great hardships. Counselor? Um, we in well, anyway, I wanted to say that, and I got it out oh. before I get shut off. Well, Counselor. I'd like to say that I'm not through yet. Okay, but allow me to just say right now that we are speaking to the points in the budget. First, we have no control of the media, and we have no control of the way the media represents these things. And in fact, it's not germane or to the color of the issue that we're discussing. I understand your feelings about this. I absolutely disagree, but that's all right. I, I've already said my piece. Okay. Uh, Councilor Schwartz, I, I would rather we not continue along this line. I think I am entitled, since I am in that photo and that's a direct comment about me, I think I'm entitled for one sentence. 
of clarification. I will give you one sentence to respond to the Thank thing you. that's already been spoken out of order, and I would like that to be I the end of this. I appreciate that, but I okay. just cannot, I cannot not respond. I want to clarify that that picture over which I had no control was had nothing to do with the opposition. It had to do with absolute thrill that we preserved our basic services and our public education. I, there is no sense of opponent in this city, as far as I'm concerned. We are all in this together, and that was pure joy and relief at preserving our basic public services that we, does, that we owe every citizen in Northampton. That's what that motion was all about. Back, uh, back, to, back to the questions about the budget, which is what we are charged to do. Are there more questions of the mayor? Councilor Freeman Daniels. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we have um, $985,000 we're allocating to the schools for the school committee to uh, work on today. Basically, yeah, that is correct. Is that, is that correct? So, so we have, um, so uh, they're doing it a, 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 along a parallel process, essentially, right now. That's and correct. They, because they're elected. Do, they're duly elected yes. to make those decisions. So um, the $255,000 into salary reserve, um, do you mind commenting on what, why we're putting you know, almost a quarter million dollars or more than a quarter million dollars into that fund? Yes. So um, salary reserve is, uh, is for purposes of when we have, uh, for example, when people uh, retire, when people um, uh, that, 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 that we paid uh, um, some of the the, uh, the end of service uh, uh, funds to people that they receive when they, upon their retirement. The other important function, as you may recall from when I came before you for a transfer out of that account, um, was for the settlement of uh, uh, collective bargaining uh, related uh, issues. And as I discussed during all of my budget hearings and during my presentation to the council um, we w we wanted to be we wanted to make sure we put funds aside because we still have a um, we still have three years of a uh, firefighters contract that is uh, in arbitration um, and we want to make sure that we have well we've put put funds in there that could cover what the city um, position in those in that arbitration has been um, because when that decision comes down, uh, again, we need to be able to fund it. Th th those um, PS uh, uh, lines of the fire department budget were, have not been funded since FY 2010. So for FY 11, 12, and 13, as well as uh, into 14, have not are, are not representative of any collective bargaining agreement, any cost of living, etc. So. Um, we felt it would be prudent to put some funds aside in reserve for that. So that's the purpose of that and of that, some of those additional funds. And that was something that when I did my um, town hall budget meetings, I listed uh, what some of our potential liabilities, liabilities that we knew and some of the outstanding liabilities. And that was one of the last ones on, you know, healthcare had been one for a while until we moved that to the other side of the ledger, this has been one of the other ones that was lingering out there. So that's why that's in there. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilor uh, Similarly, can you just um, give a little more detail uh, for the capital projects line? Just tell us uh, which projects we weren't able to do that we may now be able to do with this uh, additional income? Yeah, so we, as uh, in, in your, um, you know, in the budget book itself, uh, there was uh, a capital improvement program uh, suggest uh, report, and obviously the capital improvement uh, program committee had met and had reviewed many more projects than we were able to fund in that uh, program, um, and so we've uh, expended um, some of that um, funding. But what it kind of drives home for us, if you look at the actual. Um, how we're funding this, the capital improvement program itself is that um, as part of the increases in the investments we're making into capital stabilization and stabilization, we also need to increase that um, capital account as well, which is what we use to fund our capital improvement program. 
Um, and so th that's that's why we want to move some additional funds in there so that as we if we have other capital projects that come up in FY14, um, we have funding to be able to fund them. You know, this year, for example, you may remember we had the incident with the Academy of Music uh, fire escape, um, which uh, needed to be repaired um, uh, somewhat urgently because the it had been essentially decertified and we needed to make emergency repairs so we wanted to be able to have some funding for those kinds of capital projects okay so um, is it, it doesn't represent some specific projects we would come forward to you if it went if and when such a okay. project was identified that's then we would come come forward to you to let you know about that project but it's not we're I'm not proposing an amendment to the capital plan that you have in okay. front of you um, yeah exactly you would still have to you would still have to vote those funds, um, but if you look at the allocation that we have currently, um, one of the things we're trying to do again is to move away from, as I said, as a sort of a broken record, the reliance on free cash to to fund our our uh, our operating budget and capital is a you know that sort of capital. Uh, for the kinds of small things, because we're not going to, you know, go out to bond if we have to fix a fire escape in an emergency. We have to be able to have the funds to do that. So that's, I view it as a, another part of our of our reserve position and having those kinds of funds. Thank yeah. you. Just to pick up on this on the same discussion, uh, really, a, what we're looking at is was a very slim budget. Um, before this, before the vote, and uh, after the fiscal stability stabilization fund and the million dollars roughly to the schools, I did some math here. Um, it looks as though we're trying to fill in about only only about thirty five thousand dollars to all the different operations and maintenance mm -hmm. to a variety of city departments. Basically, I think thirty-five thousand two hundred, thirty-five thousand three hundred. That's a um, a very small amount, and I I'm confident that they're going to be running on a still running on a very tight, lean budget uh, for this upcoming year. Is that fair to say? Most definitely, and and in some cases, uh, some of those investments don't even bring them back to what their O and M budgets were in FY thirteen. Um, in the case of the collector, for example, in the case of the planning department, we're not fully restoring their O and M budgets, but we're trying to put some back in so that they're not um, so that they're not completely uh, decimated. Um, and so uh, that is definitely fair. And the question often comes up: you know, why um, why does it always you're always talking about the schools and police and public safety? Well, that's because that they represent such a large portion of our budget and our personnel. Um, and, and you know, you have the schools and the police department are two of our largest city budgets. Um, you know, we have to have a collector's office, we have to have a treasurer's office, and those are, you know, a set limited number of personnel, and most of their budgets are personnel. So in order to try to make cuts in City Hall, um, you know, we, we have to go on the O&M side. You know, I, we've made some cuts in in my office. We've reduced uh, a couple of hours in the bu in in the budget for my staff, um, and there are some other areas uh, where we've uh, reduced hours as well. Um, but these are the things that we felt were important to bring back uh, for, again, because these are departments like the Board of Health, like the Building Inspector. Um, they need these uh, these resources to be able to carry out their mission. And uh, can I? Make a request, an informal request, not a mm -hmm. formal request, uh, but uh, one I hope that you'll hear that at our next meeting in July that we can get an update uh, around these. Um, I know you don't want me to call them by what I said earlier. But, sure. Uh, around these uh, stabilization funds and so sure. on, so that we could see uh, how how we've been doing. And, and I can give you an update if you'd like. I can give you a quick update. So when if you when you vote tonight on the stabilization fund. Um, that will uh, bring that balance up to eight hundred and ninety-one thousand um, dollars. When you vote on the capital stabilization fund, that will bring it up to seven hundred thousand. Um, now, I have to. That sounds like 
a lot of money, I understand that, but you have to understand that what the bond rating agencies are telling us is that those reserves should, for a city our size, for the bond rating that we have, we should have on the order of 10 percent of our of our general operating revenues in reserve. One percent. And we're, this gets us close to 2 percent. So can um, you repeat the numbers again, please? Uh, uh, capital stabilization, if you approve the transfer, 705-472. Um, and uh, uh, stabilization, just regular stabilization, 891-255. Um. Uh, Thank you. Other, other questions? Yeah, 10 percent would be about $8 million that we would need to have in our stabilization accounts um, to, uh, uh, I know the mayor of Chicopee was just trumpeting that their, I forgot what it was, their stabilization fund was $11 million. Um, uh, so again, we, I, I, I showed charts during my during my budget presentation of similar sized cities and what their reserve positions were, um, and this was one of the kind of corollaries that I talked about during those meetings about one of the other pressing fiscal issues that we need to keep our eye on. Councilor Speck, could you just explain? Because a lot of people watching may not know that. So what difference does it make if our bond rating goes down? Could you explain what happens if we lose our currently really high bond rating and were to, it were to drop? Well, one of the examples I used during the town hall budget meetings was the police station borrowing. And we asked our financial um, analysts who help us with those bonding projects if we had uh, had to go out to bond um, and had been our rating had been downgraded, just, just one rating. Just one step. Um, yep. That the, uh, the impact in terms of our borrowing costs, they were estimating on the order of about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars additional borrowing Thank costs. You. So, those would be that would be four hundred fifty thousand. We would have to take out of the general fund that we're discussing right now to cover the debt service. So, so, um, so it's it's integrally tied. I mean, not just setting aside the fact that you it's a prudent thing to have reserves for right. emergencies for contingencies that arise. But there's the added. This is part of when they look at the city's fiscal health, the reserve position is one of the most important one, particularly having come out of a recession where both companies and municipalities relied on reserves uh, to get through that recession. Um, and so we're, many of us are trying to now rebuild them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? This is on the amended language. <clears throat> the amendment before you. Um, What's our uh, Council uh, Tacey and then Council Freeman. What's the percentage on a return on investment right now? What, what is it? I think we were showing it in our. It's 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 you know on the order of a little less than one percent is what we're ret returning on for our short term stuff. I mean the treasurer could obviously give you more yeah. accurate, but that was one of the. And I think even in our revenues we show that. Um, What's that? Yeah, we downgraded our estimate for revenues just because interest rates have been have remained so low. Uh, but that's one of the that was one of the other charts I showed in our in the budget historically that you know there were periods where we were realizing you know six hundred thousand dollars a year in interest uh, on on that short term money and now it's you know probably less than two hundred thousand that we have. Um, so it's a very that's, that's another one of those hidden revenue cuts that the economy has uh, has has put on us. Yeah, uh, Susan, do you want to speak? I just, I just wanted to say in fiscal thirteen we budgeted one hundred and twenty three thousand dollars for investment income and we're falling about fifty thousand dollars short. So in fiscal fourteen we've lowered it to seventy five thousand. So and it was as he said up around six hundred several yeah. years ago. I know it, it amounted to a, to a half a million dollar cut over the last few years. Okay, thank you. Councilor Freeman Day. I uh, just once again want to uh, applaud you, um, uh, Mr. Mayor, for, uh, for your work on, on keeping the budget um, relatively conservative and uh, for trying to build up the city's reserves and uh, for your, um, your innovative plan to, uh, to allocate um, the funds from the override uh, into a fund to uh, try to stave off another one uh, when we experience a budget shortfall. And uh, I uh, look forward to approving this budget. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any other questions or discussion? Um, roll call, please. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. 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 Um, and a roll call on the amendment. As amended. Okay. As amended. Okay. Yes. Yes. Hi. This is on the. That was the amendment. This is as the budget. We approve the amendment. Now we're as amended. Hi. Yes. 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 All right. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mary is guiding me through this. We're taking orders two through three. Um, trust your judgment of how you're, you're well, don't engaged. trust my judgment. This is not. It was, this is essentially following the same breakdown that, as I believe Council Murphy is. Okay. So if everyone's okay with that, if we proceed the way we did before. Fine. <coughs> so it's taking Fine. some as a group. Just taking ones that naturally conform with each other as a group. And okay. Then, and Fine. Moving okay. Is that okay? Is everyone all right with that? Okay. So uh, financial orders two through three. That's the Water Enterprise Fund budget, the Sewer Enterprise Fund budget, and the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund budget. Uh, I will a group. move to second. second. Motions made, and uh, any further discussion on this? Roll call, please. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Five through twenty-three. I should point out that I'll give Mary some do here. She, she actually yeah. set up the new agenda with the gap in the space, so give her the gap. I believe me. She owns it, whether she knows five it or not. This is uh, this is items five through twenty-three. <coughs> These are the revolving funds. Uh, and is there a motion to move them? So moved. And As a group. Okay. Any discussion on these? Uh, roll call, please. Aye. Present. I mean, yes. 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 Items 24 and 25. So moved. Second. Any discussion on these? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Hi. Uh, and 26 through 33. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion on the roll call? Yes. 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 Hi. Yes. Next up is the lay file. Uh, this is the financial order to authorize the creation of the fiscal stability override stabilization fund of seven hundred and seventy three thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars. There's also a request for two readings on this for reasons that are probably pretty evident. Move to approve. Second. Uh, motions made and approved. Uh, and seconded. Uh, any discussion on this? This. Yeah, Council Premier This is a creation of a new fund. Stabilization fund requires two thirds vote to take money out of it. As I understand it, yes. yes. The kids in the gallery are not. Okay. Kids. This is the, for folks watching at home, this is the stabilization fund that was that the mayor promised to establish if the override should pass <coughs> to assure protection that would require authorization from the council over the proceeding and in, in the, over the following years. So the, with the uh, intention of avoiding, um, well, assuring fiscal st stability, I think. I think it would be more appropriate way to put it. 
so the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, Suspend Rule 14. Well, wait, we need we to write. vote first here. Hang on a second. Uh, in, in, is there any further discussion on this? No. Nope. Uh, roll call, please. So. Oh, we, for the late file vote. This is the late file vote. So, we can just so all those in favor of suspending rules for the late file, please say aye. 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 Now I'll accept the motion and put this on the floor. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Now any further discussion on this side? Roll call, please. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Casey? Aye. Councilor Adams? Aye. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Boyd? Yes. Councilor Green Aye. Councilor Lavarge? Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll, accept accept a, I'll accept a motion to suspend rules, Councilor Lavarge. Suspend rules. Council <laughs> 14, rule 14. Second. There's a second. The motion is to suspend Rule 14. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? I'll accept a motion for the second reading. So moved. Second. second. Uh, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Tacey? Aye. Mr. Adams? Aye. Mr. Carney? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Freeman Daniels? Aye. Mr. Barge? Yes. Mr. Yes. <laughs> Aye. Thank you. I want to appreciate that Mary has to, the order of roll call, she has to readjust by one every time. Yes. I don't know how she does it because I actually try to anticipate when my name's going to come up. Sometimes it's after Councilor Carney, sometimes it's not. This is, um, Table on this board. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. the, this is uh, item number 34, it's the uh, budgetary transfers. This is the second reading. So uh, moved. Second. Um, any discussion on these? Uh, roll call, please. Adams? Aye. Carney? Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Coming up next is the, this is also in second reading. This is the appropriations of $5,272,000.50 from the FY 2013 general fund undesignated <coughs> fund balance to fund improvements at the Florence Fields Recreation Area. Move to approve. Could you exactly. say, could you say that one more time? Yes, I can. 5,000. I heard 5 million. I'm sorry. It's sorry. Five thousand. I did say that wrong. Thank <laughs> you. We need another overwrite for that. I don't. Yeah. Get it. It's five thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars. You get it for my award when I got yeah. home tonight. I just yeah. Wait till you see the grass. In <laughs> well, that's some expensive tailings that we just gave up. All right. So this is um, this is five thousand dollars. Five thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. And there was a motion. And there was. A, is there a second? Yeah. I think there was. Uh, any discussion on second reading besides the drastically reduced amount that I just offered? Uh, roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. 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 Aye. Next up is an appropriation for $200,000. Uh, this is from the FY13 General Fund Undesignated Fund Balance to the Capital Stabilization Fund. Uh, there is also a request for two reading. I move. I move 36 and 37 as a group. Thank you. Uh, okay. The motion to uh, for 36 and 37 is put on the floor. Is your I, thank I you second? Second. That. Okay. Second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Roll call. Roll call, please. <laughs> this is first yes. reading on both. We haven't moved to suspend rules or the second. Yes. Aye, aye. Yes. 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 Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Except a motion. Suspend rule 14. Second? Second. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I'll move to accept a motion for second reading. So moved. Second. second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out that uh, we have a long way to go to get back to get, to get our reserves up to 10%. Um, I'd be happy with 5%, 3%. But uh, one, I'm curious whether we can count the override stabilization fund as part of those reserves. It does. 
and that was one of the other uh, reasons it does count toward uh, as far as the bond. Yes, as far as our, our, um, yes. And they look at it that way because it does have that extra protection of the two thirds uh, requirement. So it it does it's now part of the other stabilization funds which get counted toward our reserves. So this is the today we're adding uh, one point one almost one point two million to our uh, to our reserves, which will help preserve our bond rating and uh, our our creditworthiness um, for the foreseeable future so I, and I think that's uh, you can never really foresee very very far when with municipal finance I guess but um, we have a plan and and uh, we hope that we can stick to it and I can think I this is a integral part of it this one's dead any other comments discussion uh, roll call please Councilor Freeman Daniels. aye Councilor Barr. yes 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 aye Yes. Yes. That is the budget. Okay. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, and thank you for, to the, all the, the counselors for your participation in the process, and obviously to all the citizens of the city who participated in the process. Um, and the city finance director does have those now revised. Uh, Oh, revenue the and expenditure uh, pages that she can give you, which show the, the revenues newly allocated. And I also need to tell you that there's a couple of finance committee contracts that need signatures that she'll distribute as well. Oh, so thank oh, great. Uh, I should. I'd also like to say thank you to the Take mayor second. and to Susan. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'd like oh, to right thank the mayor and Susan Wright um, for. A, a very arduous process that's been agreed to by all sides is at least that's one thing we can agree on it has been we're, we're difficult and too. it is the nature of these systems that they are difficult built into it are the existing conflicts and I appreciate the te uh, the temperament by which you approached and advocated for your position I really do appreciate it and Susan thank you so much for your efforts I do have to just add one editorial piece, which is to say that the state legislature, on the other hand, has not completed its budget. And right. They are Good going to point. pass a supplemental budget uh, to get them through the next week until they can finalize their budget. So just not throw for that in for comparison. Ran. Just to let you know, also, the tolls have been reestablished for the western part of the, the turnpike. Us again, paying off the big dig and having thumbs nose is thumbed at us recess can I call recess there is a request for a recess and I will gavel this uh, committee to recess and for seven minutes welcome back We're coming out of recess this is the City Council meeting of June 27 2013 I'm City Council President <laughs> White uh, next up on the agenda this is actually for referral uh, should be noted. This is upon the recommendation of Councilor Jesse M. Adams and Councilor Paul D. Spector and ordered that at regular municipal election to be held in Northampton on November 5th, 2013, that the following question be placed on the ballot pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40, Section 60. The question is, shall the city vote to accept the provisions of Section 6C of Chapter 40 of the General Laws which authorize cities and towns to appropriate money for the removal of snow and ice from private ways therein upon to public use. Um, uh, th therein open to uh, public use, and it's yes or no. So moved. Well, second. second. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to refer this to the uh, Joint Committee, DPW City Council Joint Committee. Second. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels, do you have a question? On the referral now. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll just say I was I'm ready to vote on it now, but um, if it needs no, to be discussed, no, it's been referred. Well, it has not been referred yet, though. Uh, uh, second. The second. second. Uh, all those in favor. What's that? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of uh, referring. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. It is so. Um. This is uh, the second reading. This is the authorized the easement uh, by gift of the Jesswalds and Mr. Abrams. Move approval. 
Move acceptance. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? We recall from last week, this is a, just a box of land that uh, is necessary for uh, the completion of the water drainage project. Correct. Um, this will require a roll call vote. Actually, all our remaining ones with a couple of referrals, the last two, will require a roll call vote. So. Yes. 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 Hi. This is to expand the historic district to include much of Round Hill. This is second reading. So moved. Second. It's made and seconded. It's on the floor. Anyone want to discuss it? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Nay. Yes. Uh, this is the parking prohibited all can we, times. Can we move four, five, and six as a group? Four, five, all and six. Related. Motions made for four, five, and six. Second. Second. And these are all related to parking prohibitions or limitations on Round Hill Road. And this is second reading. Six. So seven. moved. Oh, they, they've been moved. Oh, they were moved. Yes, you Sorry. Moved, you moved moved I, they moved them as a group. The short-term right. memory issue. Yeah, I do. Uh, any further discussion <laughs> besides movements? <laughs> Councilor Freeman Daniels. Just to reiterate that uh, this, this is a narrow street. We're trying to widen, we're trying to let some, uh, reduce some parking to widen it a little bit, uh, allow for uh, the delivery of construction materials. And uh, it will be expensive to Im install these uh, no parking signs. We're hoping we can get some, uh, a little bit of compensation from the developer. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Yes. 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 Next up is also on second reading overview of the city council and city council committees. I move uh, seven into twelve. Seven to twelve as a group. Second. <clears throat> Motion to made for Article Seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We moved as a group and it's been seconded. Um, any discussion on these? Yeah. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels? I think um, we all recall that this is the, these are all the or amendments to the ordinances that uh, will remove claims from uh, the purview of the ordinance committee. And uh, we had a Quite a long discussion on it last time, so I think we're. This is on the recommendation of the city solicitor, as, as you recall. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. Adams. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Aye. The. Next two up are ordinances for referral to uh, ordinance. Uh, our, uh, number 13 is the schedule off street parking areas. Move move 13 and 14 referral 13 to ordinance. 13, uh, both, uh, that's been seconded. That's also parking meter locations and regulations. Any discussions on the referral? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, on updates, we have Don't even uh, counselors who will be pleased to know, and I need your attention on this, counselors, so you can get your calendar. Uh, executive session, uh, July 11th, uh, 6.30 p.m. We're going to do it in council chambers? We're doing, cha okay, in chambers. And this is uh, an executive session is uh, in accordance with uh, sections 2.6 C. <laughs> two and four of the charter and mass general uh, law chapter 39 for the sole purpose to approve and release executive session minutes of January 3rd 2013 and to approve the release of the executive session minutes of July 11th 2013 it's it's we'll actually have to <laughs> release the minutes of that meeting and approve it in the context of that meeting does everyone that follow that but this is in order to let me explain. We uh, uh, 
this is one of those artifacts that's left over from the transition uh, in charter change, but we are releasing executive session um, minutes of, uh, uh, of January 3rd, 2013 um, to the public, but that has to be done in the context of an executive session. And, and rather than get stuck in, a, in an eternal loop because that would create another executive session with more executive <laughs> sessions. We have to, we, we, the I hope minutes. that we, no. uh, one of the items on the agenda will be to approve those minutes out of there as well. Is, is that the law that you have to <clears throat> do this, the release of minutes in executive session? This is the point that we weren't entirely clear on, and no one was particularly clear on, and even I think the city solicitor wasn't particularly confident, so on, to err on the side of caution that we chose to go into executive session. This will be the last time we have to do it. And the, I mean, as the rule stands now, the council president meets with the, the city solicitor to determine whether it's appropriate to release executive session minutes to the public. Um, usually when, when, in most cases, the issue has been settled. Um, but in this instance, it, we felt it was appropriate just to cover our south sides here, just to be double, double Secret, and let me just, Mary. You want to weigh in? <laughs> I'm serious. Well, yep. What we've been doing for the past two years is, uh, President Buck said, was the city solicitor and the council president would look at the minutes and pertain to be released. It would be just released. But the city solicitor has brought up that we should be in an executive session to approve the minutes, and it is one. Um, <coughs> One thing that you can, you are allowed to do. It's not in the not list of nine reasons yeah. to have an executive session, but to approve and release minutes can be. Councilor Adams. I also submitted a, a rule change to clarify this. That'll be on the agenda of the next ordinance meeting. Thank you. Councilor Adams was very considerate enough to 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 address this anomaly. Councilor Labarge. So that is July 11th at 6:30. July 11th, 6.30 in these chambers. Okay. Mr. President. Councilor Schwartz and then Councilor Speck. I just want to say I'm, I will be away on vacation that week. No, no, no. That's 6.30. Is, is the only thing we need to do the approval of these minutes at that meeting? Would it, would it be possible to meet at quarter of 7 if all we're going to do? Otherwise, we then have to adjourn and wait until 7 o'clock. And I love all the, of you. The but concern I'm is, you. The concern is in that it's an executive session. If people are already congregating, we'll have to clear the chambers in order to do executive session. Why can't we do that? Well, we've often done that. We've often cleared. I mean, a quarter of 7, it's going to be a couple minutes. We've often cleared the chambers. That's been our standard procedure when that's, we have an executive, executive session. Executive session usually happens at the end of the meeting. But we do clear the. Yeah, it's, it's just I'm saying when the public comes in to speak, and say there's 10 or 12 people. Okay, it's a little we'll more go out for pizza. Yeah, Jane, we'll go get pizza. I'll be ready. I just, I want to be considerate of, of you know. Yes, did we miss why? <laughs> why are we not doing Why are we not doing it at the end? Um, Which would take care of that problem. It's supposed to be gone. I, I thought maybe you said something. That's our standard procedure. Okay, well, why don't we do that then? Why don't we do that? Then we'll do it okay. at the end of the... Yeah. The, the, the end of the night? Yeah. Um, so we're not going to meet at 6.30? No. We're not going to meet at 6.30, unless we'll you, you want to have pizza. 11.30. Uh, 11, no, <laughs> not 11.30. No. <laughs> we have to go to a church. I think our deep, long nights are over for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> July 11. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Nope, there's something else. Um, there, let's see, uh, there's information requests, no, any new business? Uh, yeah, take a ride by Florence Fields, it's looking cool. The backstops are going up for the ball fields, uh, concrete's been poured, pavement, parking lots. Tailings removed. <laughs> no, there's, now there's another pile. We have advertise those yet. There's always another file. Everything is going. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, okay. Excuse oh, me. Sorry. Uh, uh, re reminder. Uh, motion back. July 11th, August 15th. Those are your next two meetings. August we 15th. Are, we have, we're only having one meeting in July and one meeting in August. So. Yes. So, so August for 15th. Now motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Sure. All those in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much. Thank you.